she's going to be aggressive herself. Um, and she's definitely got something to prove. Well, she just wasn't feeling well, so she finally showed us this week she's human, which <laughs> is something we've all questioned. If you've ever watched professional pickleball online, you're bound to have found your mind wondering what it takes to make it to that stage in the first place. You've probably also thought about the possibility of making it there yourself. The allure of playing in a high stakes match at championship court is a strong one, and today we're going to learn exactly how you get there. First and foremost, you're going to need the right equipment to roll with as you begin your journey to pickleball stardom. This means arming yourself with any player's most important tool, their pad. You'll also want to experiment a bit with this and try out the numerous options out there. Once you've settled on your preferred paddle brand, weight, shape, composition, and so on, you'll want to invest in some other gear. Getting some good tennis shoes to roam the court with will make your path to pro much smoother. Also, take time to invest in proper athletic wear like shirts, shorts, skirts, visors, and sunglasses to ensure you maximize your performance on the court. Another item that'll come in handy later down the line will be an excess of balls. You're gonna need a lot of these suckers to drill with and use in your day-to-day -day grind, so make sure to invest in lots of tournament standard balls like the Franklin X40s. Mind you, these little chunks of plastic do not come cheap, so buying them in bulk is definitely the way to go to save some extra cash long term. Assuming that you have all the proper gear to get started, you're going to want to seek out a proper place to play. Ideally, you're going to want an outdoor, well-maintained, hardcore, pickleball-specific facility to play at. As the sport grows, more pickleball-specific courts are popping up across the country. Make areas like these your home away from home. They'll be the locations where you spend the vast majority of your grind. Because of this, finding good courts to play on is super important. There are plenty of public courts available in well-populated areas, and a large portion of racket clubs are now offering private pickleball courts of their own for their members. And while you're at it, join a pickleball club or league of your own and find some other players to consistently play with. You're going to need a community to support your game, so make connections with people. Get involved in your local pickleball scene. Make friends with people of a similar skill level as yourself. Most importantly, seek out players like yourself who are focused on improving their game and competitive play. Don't be afraid to play up to a higher skill level if you have to, and be sure to take advice from more seasoned players. In fact, you might want to actively seek out this kind of advice with... Pickleball, like any other sport, has its own ecosystem of players who make their money by teaching other players. These primarily come in the form of private coaches and instructors. You can find plenty of certified coaches online, though for a rather hefty price. These coaches come in different levels of certification based on skill level and mastery of the curriculum their organization offers. But generally finding a good coach for most skill levels is not exceptionally difficult. Coaching offers you plenty of nuanced insights into your own game and gives you the most consistent, personal, and useful advice you could ever want. It is definitely a vital part of any player's journey to professional play. In addition to traditional coaches, you may also want to attend a few professional player clinics. These are often hosted throughout the year all around the United States by numerous notable players in the competitive community. They offer players a chance to receive some personal advice from already established pros and an outlet to meet and improve with other local players. Clinics usually last a couple of days and cost a larger chunk of cash up front, but will almost certainly result in some insight or improvements to your game. If you can't afford full-time coaching right away, resources on YouTube are your best friend. There are lots of creators who pump out high-quality instructional content all the time. Primetime Pickleball, Pickleball Kitchen, and even pros like Simone Jardim have loads of educational content for aspiring players. So, make sure you utilize these free resources as much as possible. 
but now we're getting to the nitty gritty day to day type stuff that will help you pave your way to championship court. So let's not mince words here. Going pro in any sport takes insane commitment and skill. The average professional athlete trains five to six hours per day, six days out of the week, not including time specifically spent playing the game they compete in. That's an insane amount of effort and time to dedicate to pickleball, especially if you've got a day job. Now, with pickleball being a younger sport, you'll definitely have a little bit more leniency in terms of the time required to go pro, but don't let that give you any sense of false hope. You're still going to need to dedicate countless hours to hone your game to the level required to even consider going pro. So that brings up another question. What exactly should you be doing with that time? The short answer here is just plain and simple hard work. Believe it or not, most professional athletes spend the vast majority of their time not actually playing the sport they're literally paid to play. Instead, they are conditioning their bodies and drilling. So, to the surprise of no one, that's exactly what you'll be doing too. First things first, you need to start working out. And we're not talking about hitting the pool once a month a year or going for a morning jog every so often. No, no, no. We're talking about showing up to the gym multiple times a week and going hard for hours. You'll want to focus your workouts first on building endurance and stamina. Treadmills, ellipticals, and other similar tools will all give you a helping hand here. Moreover, building some muscle mass is important, specifically in your upper body. You don't have to be able to bench 300 pounds here or something absurd like that, but seeing as this has a paddle sport that focuses on your upper body, it's a good idea to try and beef up your arms a bit. Also, make sure to focus your workouts. Spend one day focusing on one aspect of your body. It'll do wonders to shoring up any weak points you have in your physique in the long run. Sound exciting? Well, don't get too hyped up yet. You've got another vitally important step to take in your training. Staying in shape was just the general aspect of your pickleball prep. Now we're getting to the pickleball specific part. Have you ever asked yourself, what's the best way to improve in pickleball? Is it to play dozens of matches on end? Maybe playing those matches with higher skilled players does the trick. Well, here's a little hint. The best way to improve at pickleball quickly isn't to actually play the game. Drills, my friends, drills are what will take you to the promised land. And not just any drills, mind you, but targeted, repetitive, and effective drills are what you're after. This is where having a group of like-minded, competitive players and or a dedicated coach will definitely come in handy. Let's face it, most people aren't too keen on pickleball drills. Dinking back and forth on end with your partner while doing little else for an hour isn't exactly going to get the blood pumping, but it sure as hell will pay dividends in the future. The best way to build the fundamentals of the game comes through repetition. Dinks, drives, serves, drops, and other common shots are all prime material for good drilling. Almost anything you can do to the ball and pickleball can and should be drilled. Center on your weaknesses first. If you can't hit a third shot drop to save your life, make your life for the next week about making a good drop. Practice, practice, practice until you get it right. And then, once you get it right, practice some more until you can't get it wrong. Raise all elements of your game on the court until they're all equally solid. Remember, you're only as strong as your weakest link here. And all of that's just for shots. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed now, I hate to break it to you, but we're only halfway there. There's a whole nother aspect of the game that you need to refine, and that is your mental game. You'll often hear pros describe pickleball as chess on concrete. The game becomes far more cerebral at higher levels of play. Court positioning, shot selection, stacking, targeting, poaching, shading, and a player's footwork all arise as cornerstones of upper level success. Now, drilling these parts of the sport is another thing. There are certain drills that you can do that can benefit the mental side of your game, yes. 
but they aren't quite as effective as they otherwise could be. For this side of your game, your best bet is to record and analyze your matches. Of course, supplement this with strategy videos and coaching, but there will never be something quite as eye-opening for a pickleball player as picking apart their own gameplay. You'll begin to notice certain patterns in your play, flaws in your technique, general mistakes, errors in judgment, and so on. Be brutally honest with yourself. Look at what you're doing wrong and find ways to erase those mistakes. It might be uncomfortable or boring, but understanding the strategy of the game and specifically understanding how you play will enable you to be mindful of your weaknesses and actively attempt to iron them out. Oh, and on top of all of this, don't forget you're still going to want to play actual games every day too. Now, if the idea of constant drilling and physical conditioning didn't completely kill any desire you had to compete at a top level, the realities of tournaments and professional play might just finish the job. To put it bluntly, as things stand right now, professional tournaments in pickleball just suck. Allow me to explain. To start, not just anyone can waltz right into a pro-level event and take home gold. You need to qualify first. Now, the means of qualification can vary from event to event, but generally speaking, you will need to have a high enough rating in UTPR to compete. Some events set the bar as low as 4.0+, plus, but generally you'll see a 5.0 plus barrier to entry. If you don't have a UTPR, you'll have to self-rate your skill and then play in an event or two in order to get a full 4-digit rating. So, how do you get that high UTPR? You play in other sanctioned events that Pro Tours host. They can span all the way down from novice 2-0 to highly advanced 5-0 play. Generally speaking, you won't get paid for winning in these events, and the only reward you'll get for impressive placements will be some ranking points. Also note that if you perform poorly, your UTPR will be lowered. So already you're facing a pretty tough grind to qualify for events that will even give you the opportunity to potentially earn some money for a decent placement. Yeah, even if you can claw your way into a pro level tournament, there's no guarantee that you make anything back by playing in it. In fact, you have a bit to lose in your UTPR should you completely bomb out of an event. That's not even mentioning the lack of depth in pickleball payouts in general. In doubles at a PPA Tour Championship level event, you'd need to minimally get 5th place in order to earn a cash prize. In singles, you'd have to get at least 4th. Moreover, at even lower level events, your chances are made even slightly more slim by a hard cap of prizes at 4th and up. So pickleball payouts are really top heavy. At least that means there's more money to hand out to those top performers, right? Well, not really. The most you can expect to see at a PPA championship level event is $10,000 for a gold medal in doubles. You get half of that for a gold in singles. Fifth in doubles nets your team $500. Fourth place in singles is also $500. That's at premier events. At tier 3 tournaments, don't expect to see much better. For finishing fourth in singles, you'll see $400 and a win would only net you 1,700. On their own, these figures might not sound too bad. A few hundred bucks for playing some good pickleball seems a lot better than just grinding endlessly for free. But remember, we need to factor in travel expenses here. Assuming a tour level event doesn't just happen to pop up in your backyard, you'll probably be looking at one to two thousand dollars investment just to cover travel expenses, food, and hotel accommodations. That wouldn't even be including a tournament entry fee, a figure which can rise to well over a hundred dollars. So really, unless you're winning, or at least getting second, you're probably losing a fair amount of money by competing anyways. Don't worry though, it's not all doom and gloom. There is a silver lining, and its name is sponsorship deals. This is how the vast majority of pros make their money. If you're good enough to compete at top level events, you will likely be approached by various brands to offer you a sponsorship. 
by partnering with paddle manufacturers, clothing brands, supplement providers, and whoever else is willing to offer you cash for an endorsement, you can ease the heavy financial burden of competing. You'll also never have to worry about buying your own gear ever again, so that's a nice perk. Also, if you get really good enough, tours might even offer to pay you appearance fees just to show up to their events. According to the PPA, they've paid out $30,000 in appearance fees for their championship level events alone. That's not too bad of a bonus if you can pocket some of it for yourself. But seeing the professional pickleball scene from this angle can seem pretty daunting. It can be difficult to understand why anyone would want to try and do this in the first place. The amount of work compared to the potential reward really isn't favorable to the individual, especially when no level of success is guaranteed. But in spite of this, there are thousands of motivated players who push themselves daily in the name of going pro in the sport. Among this select group of players aspiring to reach the top, is a fellow YouTuber, Shanderwood, who's graciously agreed to come on and talk about his experiences in attempting to go pro. As a 4-5 plus player out of Georgia, he's currently in the trenches trying to claw his way up to professional play. He also makes pretty great content over at his YouTube channel, which will definitely be linked in the description. Go check it out for some high quality pickleball content. But without further ado, I'll turn the mic over to Shay. What motivates you to go pro? I played football in college at Georgia Tech. I put so much work into my craft to make it to that stage, but when I got to college, I didn't do everything I could have possibly done to be the best. I feel like pickleball is my second chance and I'm leaving no doubt this time. Seeing my progression over time has been a huge motivator. I love seeing progress and I can see huge leaps and bounds in my game from even just a few months ago. How often and intensely do you train or drill? Right now, I'm training seven days a week. I may not be hitting a ball every day, but I'm doing something to elevate my game. I love working when I know nobody else is, so I'm a big fan of the 6 a.m. grind. In a given week, I probably drill five days a week, play one day, and take one day off from pickleball. I'm getting some sort of agility training in three times a week and lifting five days. I do a ton of stretching, yoga to help my body with recovery. How do you overcome the financial burdens of competitive play? Well, I'm not playing pro events at the moment, so I'm not really spending any money on pickleball. I've always been very financially responsible with an entrepreneurial mindset. The best advice that I could possibly give is just to live well within your means and not take on unnecessary debt. Focus your income on the acquisition of cash flow generating assets and stay away from liabilities as much as possible. What do you hope to ultimately achieve in pickleball? Dude, my biggest dream as of recently is to become a pickleball Olympian. And that sounds so crazy to even say, but there's a lot of things that have to go right in order for this to happen. But man, I think it's totally possible. My short term goal is to be 100% certain that I can compete at the 5.0 level by my birthday in February, and I think that I'm right there already, if not already past that. My advice for players looking to turn pro, don't try to do it alone. There are so many people out there that are willing to help and support you if you just share your dreams with the world. Speak it into existence, work towards it every single day, and only do it if you truly love it. Look, the long and short of it is, going pro in pickleball is unbelievably hard. Not only do you have to grind the game on the daily, you need to drill, condition yourself, surround yourself with other serious players, analyze and fix your weaknesses, attend tournaments, perform well to qualify for pro level events, and then perform well enough there to secure some prize money and sponsorship deals. All of that just to get your foot in the door. Once you reach a professional level, you're in direct competition with all of the best competitors in the world doing the exact same things as you. You'll be starting right at the bottom again 
and forced to climb yet another ladder to get to the top of the competitive scene. This isn't a route for the faint of heart, nor is it one you should go down if you're motivated by financial needs. Trust me, the return is not worth it. But if you've got the passion and drive to succeed, you love the game for its own merit and want to turn a passion into your career, well, you can try your hand at this uphill battle. Who knows? Maybe you'll be able to make your name in the competitive sphere and achieve greatness. Only time will tell. Thanks for watching. Parento and Newman. Newman's first mixed title. Orlando Cup in the hands of those two individuals. Congrats. Oh,